where I tell my story. These are our stories. This is my story. This is real work. 100% sure you want this on film? I was the only one that didn't know what was really going on. My father is not allowed to see us, visit us, or anything. Listen to my story. This is real work. This is Real Words. Welcome to Real Works. I'm Avin Jogia. The F. John Outcult Award is an honor given to a teen for filmmaking that is powerful, personal, and real. This week, we'll take a look at three films nominated in 2011. Let's get started with Eileen Goodgart's Search for a Euphoric Relationship. You know what I said to my friend the other day? What did you say to your friend the other day? That your promises are the equivalent of paper towels. I'm like the f***ing bounty of promises, okay? My shit works. You can absorb like a whole puddle no, with no, that no, that's not what I meant. You know what? That's I, what meant I meant that you use it once and it's like tra la la goodbye. Well, you know what, I mean? Fine, fine. David. David was everything to me. The person that I loved more than anybody. I fell for him. very complicated. Only complicated is an understatement. In fact, it's beyond that. Hmm? Are we going to sit in silence or are we going to talk? I'm going in silence. Silence? Why silence? Because I don't feel like talking to anybody. I don't know. What? I, don't, I don't like silence. I like it. Why do you like silence? I don't have to bother saying shut the up. When I was with David, my definition of love was sacrifice. I thought that you had to be able to give everything to that person, no matter what it was, and you wouldn't always receive anything back. And to me, that seemed okay. You know why I dealt with you, Eileen? Uh oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Dramatic! I love you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you do. David, uh, I know you. You do not love me. Yeah, you, you don't know you're me. The, no, you admitted the one. five seconds ago you don't know me anymore. You and now you're saying. No, because you told me. Hello! You're the one that told me I don't love you anymore. When was this? When was this? When you were spazzing out and I was trying to save your life. Do you not remember that? I. No, actually, I was really gone at that moment. Yeah. If you remember. No, because you know that I don't like you telling me that you're gonna die, and all the time you would be like, I'm gonna kill myself right now. Don't tell me again, or I'm gonna kill I, myself. Uh, you know what, Eileen? No, because you guilted me. I didn't. And I didn't speak to you because I didn't want you to die, David. Uh, and I, uh, you, know, you know what? I'm not even coming up with responses for because this. Because you know that I'm right. You know what? You sound upset. I wonder why. You know what? There's absolutely nothing I can do to fix that. Because you said it. That's why. I did why. say it. I'm... You told me I don't love you anymore. 
you're a for da 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 da, and you used all the words in the world like against me. Like I hate you. Don't talk to me again. I'm gonna kill myself. Da 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 da. -da. I'm gonna go drown myself in alcohol. All the shit that I've always hated when you told me. Cause you know what? I can't live without you. And you do this to me all the time. Love doesn't exist. If love existed, then I would be happy. I wouldn't be sad and frowning and crying and wishing that everything that happened didn't happen. If love existed, then why would people leave you? Why would they forget about you? Why would they not care? It wasn't always like this. David was sweet, he was caring, he gave the best pep talks. He made me smile when all I wanted to do was crawl into a box and disappear. He's not a monster. I didn't even fucking do my homework. I have so much fucking homework to do, I didn't do anything. I didn't I'm gonna fail at life. You're not gonna fail at life. I've been telling you that forever. I'm going to fail you are not at Life. I didn't not do my gonna fail at life. Shut your mouth. Holy shit, I leave. You do everything you do freaking awesome. No, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everything you do works. Eileen, you're gonna do fine. I've been telling you this since No, because I've been telling you this since sixth grade. No, because back then I was I'm not here sitting and judging and I'm not here blaming anybody. Because I'm the villain too. He hurt me you have to take it into consideration that we hurt each other. Because I thought you were done with me. I thought you didn't care. You sort of dipped out on me after a little while, you know? I wanted you to fight for me. Uh, I can't read mine. I know that I hurt you. Yeah. I didn't mean to. You did a good job of it. I mean, the unintentional is always the most painful. But you hurt me too, you know? Oh, I did? Really? Oh. I guess I got my revenge or something. I don't know. You got your revenge? Unintentionally, of course. I've admitted to hurting him. He unfortunately hasn't, but maybe that'll change. Maybe, maybe he'll apologize. That one on film. Do you love me? 100% sure you want this on film? Yeah. Fine. Yes, I do love you. Do you? Yeah. In our next film, Justice Allen, a straight but not narrow 16-year-old, speaks with folks in his Caribbean community to discuss their views on homosexuality. This is Minds in the Closet. Don't be a gay. That's basically how it all started. A while ago, in a little place called East Flatbush, me and some buddies were on the phone, and one of these buddies decided to say something really stupid. And my response was, don't be a gay. Now, while it didn't hit me immediately, it did eventually hit me. Why did I equate stupidity with homosexuality? I realized that it was because of my surroundings, like the area that I grew up in. I live in a predominantly Caribbean neighborhood, which is predominantly homophobic. Um, and right now, I just want to know why. So, what do you guys 
thing about gay people. Like, honestly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 Yo, listen. My main thing. Yo, listen, 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 listen. Nah, but my main thing, my main thing with gay people, I have no, I don't have a problem with them, but how do you expect to have reproduction? So would you consider yourself a homophobe? Like, are you homophobic? No, but I'm about life, period. Like, living life is to have reproduction, being able to make kids, so on and so forth. When, when you're in that type of lifestyle, there's... Uh, How can you reproduce? All you have plan, to do man. is for some multiply. Yeah, yeah. You can't say that neither. Yeah, you can't say that You can't say that You can't say I understand what you're saying, but you can't say that this is something God's plan. Because the amount of dirt that we do, I'm saying, I see it. It's not wrong with it. I'm just going as far as you can. You can't bring me down, bring me down, bring me down, bring me down. What comes to mind when you hear the word gay? I have the couple. Same sex. Um, gay. Original meaning means happy. Modern day term, homosexuality, lesbianism. It's like different people from me. I don't, you know. Um, I'm originally from Trinidad, so I do know that there is a large percentage of homophobia that, that exists within the Caribbean community. People in the black community are homophobic because of the factors of the way we were raised. We were raised in a community where men and women were always to be together. That's the way we were taught. That's what we saw. We didn't really see that in our neighborhoods. What we saw in our neighborhoods was drugs, violence, prostitution. It is. It's a problem with them because they don't, they don't like that, that same-sex type relationship. They really like you know, how it's supposed to be. You don't like that. How it's supposed to be, right? Like the man and female, not man and man or female or female. I look at it like this. If you, as a, a, a gay, as you call it, or you bisexual, you understand me? You're going both ways with man and woman. Then something gotta be wrong with your upstairs. You mentally disturbed. Because you don't know where, to, you don't know yourself, and you don't know where to go. Oh, yeah, you're confusing what, like. What, what makes, what makes, what makes, what makes a homosexual man think it's, it's okay for him to do that? That's negative and negative. You can't put that together. You know what I'm saying? You can't put that together. You know? You got a pee pee, I got pee pee. That doesn't work. When did you realize you were gay? Before I realized I was straight. <laughs> I've known that I was gay my entire life. Yeah, there's not a time that I can actually remember not knowing that I was gay. So as far back as my memory goes. How do you identify in terms of your sexuality? It's an odd question. Because people identify me, I never actually say anything. But I guess I would identify as queer. Queer. Or, you know, just say, yeah. Like, yeah. Queer. I mean, like, I don't know, because, like, like, some people say, like, yo, I'm a lesbian, and some people say I'm gay. Like, you know, I never tell people this is what I am. People just know I like girls. You know, I think a lot of times straight people think there's something different that happens with a gay person. No, I mean, as a straight person, when you're in grade school, you like girls, there's a girl you like, and then as you start going through puberty, you like the girl a little bit differently than you used to like her, you know, when you were younger. Um, and so it's the same kind of thing. It's just you have to kind of, as a gay person, deal with it differently. Um, I guess it has to do with tradition and culturally as well. Um, a lot of us were brought up under the Catholic system, Christianity on a whole. So it's hard to separate, you know, religion from your own personal beliefs and so forth. Okay. You know, all right, all right, all right. And you know what? Listen, 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 listen. All right. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Back, huh? From what is written by it's, it states to be wrong. That's why I'm going. You can't. So people listen, use listen, the listen, biblical, you know, allusions, the biblical references, and go back to religion and say this is why it would be okay, except for that. But clearly, it says in the Bible, and I think that's in 90%, more than 90% of the cases, just a crutch that people use. Like anyone else, like you know, like I like do things just like anyone.
anyone else. Like I can't, I'm not gonna help, I'm not gonna like help while I'm in track pursuit because I wanna do that. I don't think there's like a checklist to how you should raise someone. And like in the Caribbean like environment, I just think that it's a lot of ignorance. If you grew up in a house of murderers, yeah. your mom's a murderer, your dad's a murderer, when do you think that's normal? Because your mother, your father told you that. No, no, because you know it's the police. Put it like this. If you grow up in a house, right? If you grow up in a house from from a kid, it's as many ways that you could that that could happen to you. You grow up in a house with pro women. If you ain't going out, if you ain't getting away from out of that house and going to play with dudes, automatically. It 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 it, it, it re reflects on you and become more feminine. You act more feminine, you got the feminine attitude. Where you getting that from? Yeah, it's true. Okay. No, no. It's, 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 it's true, but there's another part in it. He might be more sensitive to women than women, women, but he would not necessarily become gay like that. It's easy to hate a concept. It's easy to hate in the dark room. It's easy to hate when your door is closed and to make comments. It's different when the light is shining on you. It's different when somebody is your cousin or your friend or someone you know personally. Um, what's encouraging to me is, is um, frankly, your generation and people like you that are less hung up about it, honestly, and less homophobic and more embracing of difference and more tolerant and more willing to kind of challenge outdated, outmoded ways of thinking. I'm here with Justice Allen. Um, I've seen your film. It was really, really cool. I think it was, a, it was an interesting angle uh, to see kind of homophobia from the Caribbean community. You're going out there asking all these questions about homosexuality. They, they, did you, they kind of like impose that upon you as well? Did they think that you were gay? And like, why were you asking all these questions? And like, uh, As far as the filming process went, very few people, more more filmmakers asked uh, how how do I relate to the homosexuality right, 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 part right, right. of it, um, more so than interview interviewees or anything like that. So, Interesting, because yeah. yeah, I mean, like I I because I started this charity straight but not narrow, and you know, as a straight guy, like supporting your gay friends, there's always that like question that they like, are, how does this how does this relate to you? Absolutely. And they're like, you know, so I think because I think it's a fairly new, well, not new, but a fairly you know kind of budding thing, like straight guys being like, look, I want to know why this is such an issue, right? And then, like in your community, for instance, like watching the the movie, you really, like, it's really very, um, they have very strong opinions about how they feel. Like, and, and a lot of it's not like just out and out negative. They're not just like, you know, this is awful. It's like a lot of it, they're like, there's like a justification as to why yeah. they think it's awful. So or I think that's what they feel is justifying. Do you think it's just like East Flatbush? Do you think it's like, you think it's like a Brooklyn itself? I would say it's um it's not even just limited to East Flatbush or just Brooklyn. I think it's um wherever there's a, a large Caribbean influence, like a large Caribbean um group of people. Yeah. I would say uh for the for the most part there's gonna be a lot of a, a negative stigma. And um go, going back to what you said about uh um S B N N. Yeah. Um I would I would absolutely agree that there's a there's a budding um there's change, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's a change going about as far as straight men standing up and, and feeling that gay people should have, have certain rights. What do you think it is for, for, for gay Caribbean people in this area or any group of people, like any area? Do you think it's harder for them? Do you think, did, you talk, did you talk to any of those people? Absolutely. I spoke to, uh, I believe, two or, two or three gay people of um, Caribbean descent. They all shared the same um, the same viewpoint that it was it was really, really hard, some more so than others within their family. Uh, for instance, uh, Rodney Evans, mm. he, he shared with me the fact that his mother was completely um, destroyed by his, his coming out, that he was mm. gay. Um, and there are, there are also Caribbean families that will support it. Uh, as the author Anton um, Nimblet said in my film, he, was, he, he received an overwhelming amount of support from his mother, which is uh, yeah. um, really interesting, ju juxtaposed to Rodney and what he went through. But I'd say overall, gay Caribbean people have a fairly rough time um, in their families and in their neighborhoods, especially being who they are. So you're nominated for an F. John Alcult Award. That's really cool. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what you, what were your thoughts when you got nominated? What were, you know? 
I was very surprised when I got nominated, um, especially considering the films that were also um, chosen among, among lines. I thought they were all extremely better than my film. Uh, I was a fan of all of them, and um, it was just, it was a really, really cool honor to, uh, to, be, to be mentioned among those, those films. Thank you for talking to me. Man. Thank you, yeah, yeah. really, it's, it's been good. a pleasure. It's, it's um, good. Yeah, peace out. 16-year-old Shalon Nelson has spent most of her life in foster care. When she came to real work, she decided to make sense of the events that tore her family apart. Sometimes there are days where everything is perfect. There are the nights when we sit down and we laugh and we conversate and we talk about things and it really seems perfect. Then there are the days when I, myself, sit in my room and it hits me. Everything is not okay. Kenyatta, peace and blessings. This is your father. You just give me a chance to meet face to face before you just constantly keep denying me. I'm not a bad guy. I, you have to understand a father before you just deny him. Give me a chance to explain who I am. I love you. And I miss you. I miss you alone. I miss you, Kenya. I miss Khalid. I miss Shabazz. I miss Atala. I miss Leroy and Tyrone. I miss you. Every minute of every day of the 16 years that this thing has been going on, I love you, and I miss you. To replay this message, press 1. To delete, press 7. To return the message sender's call, press 8. To save... My name is Shalon, and I'm 16 years old. I've been in foster care for over 14 years, and I've been from forced to home to forced to home. Father Melvin Lilly hit your brother Tyrone with the belt buckle. Like the situation with Tyrone getting hit, the way I heard and every way I heard it was an accident. When he was spanking him, like you know how when you roll the belt off? Mm -hmm. Like he did it like where he was just holding the buckle in the other end and the buckle swung loose when he was swinging. But wasn't the only accident part in that was the fact that it was the belt buckle? Because that's, that's what I heard. I, I heard that, well, Shamika mentioned that he was abusive already, right? Because Tyrone, like, my, Mommy said that Tyrone had a smart mouth. And um, so I assume he already beat Tyrone, but the belt buckle was the accident. They keep on asking me, do I want to see my father? And then sometimes I get mixed stances, but then now I know I don't want to see him. Just can't stand him right now. I really don't want to look at him. My father is not allowed to, to see us, visit us, or anything. And partially that's my fault. I chose not to know him. And I blame him for everything. It's hard to give up your children. I said if they want to be adopted, I just go for surrender with adoption. So I can still be in y'all lives, because I can't let go yet. I don't want to let my children go. Do you feel adoption will tear us apart? Mm, yeah. I wanted to interview my father, but I guess I was afraid to. And because I was afraid, I didn't try to. All I have from him are the voice messages and this letter. Shalon, my eldest princess, I did not create 
you or any of your brothers or sisters to give away. I love you, I miss you, and I need you in my life to make our family real. That's it for this week. I'm Avin Jogia. Tune in next week to see some more stories from Brooklyn Teens.